All right, so we'll take a few questions if you keep, keep concise and just ask can be brief as well so we can get through a few. Uh, maybe Yeah, maybe I'll take three. So any questions first round? Yes, um, I have a, a friend who works as a lab manager at uh, Campbell Law High School here, and uh, she found in um, a, a closet, she's cleaning out uh, the fourth I'm holding up here, and it's called Understanding the Greenhouse Effect, and it covers a lot of things uh, that were presented already, both in terms of the fact and the science and, and also the public response. And it was published in 1989 and it was distributed to the school system. Is that 24 years ago? So what happens? Somebody locked the cupboard. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take a few more questions and we can answer them together. Does anyone have any other? Uh, yeah. uh, that business of leaving the coal in the ground sounds a bit high in the sky to me without an alternative, like in terms of geothermal energy. So I think you've got to put something on the agenda that the Labor Party or somebody does. And I think it was Joy Maloof talked about the big solar panels in, the, um, um, in South Australia. There needs to be the public needs to have something that they believe in. Someone's got to back it with some money. I think George Blue said it cost a million dollars and she said it was peanuts, and I agree. Um, should there be something on the agenda that people can actually grab hold of, a vision? It doesn't seem to be any vision in Australia. Yeah. Is there one more question or take for I don't understand why there's no talk about cutting consumption when it's clear that we only need to use about 25% probably of the energy we currently use. I don't get it why that seems really obvious for me. We don't need it half the time. Do you want to respond on keeping in mind that a lot of these things will be covered in other sessions as well in terms of solutions? So if anyone has any particular questions about the science and other things as well, do you keep in mind? But um, but I'd love to get you to do a copy of that. Um, yeah, so uh, if you could arrange that, would be great. Um, I guess it's, I mean, it's obvious there's been a concerted campaign from about sort of mid-90s on, mid onwards to, uh, um, to muddy the water about science. I mean, the, the, the science is, hasn't changed all that much. The details, and some of the details have changed, and it's just generally, generally tends to get worse and worse with each report. Um, but yeah, the science has been well established for, yeah, for a good 20, 30 years. So, um, yeah, the science is not the issue, it's, it's, it's I guess, the communication and the, the significations of it. Um, and, and that sort of points to the general Dan Black's point. Um, this, you know, the science is really clearly telling us what are the consequences of what we what we choose to do. Um, so, you know, it's um, that really that really is the, 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 the key point. Is if we keep burning it, they're going to radically change the world. We're already we're already radically changing things. So, and, and I, I guess any any link towards some of those consequences of, of that, what the science is saying to um, to outcomes like it's going to cost us trillions of dollars in sea level defences and etc etc etc. Maybe that's the that's the that's the suggestion which, which can be made more strongly. What are the what are the financial consequences? Because because that's what's that's what speaks to you know, to a lot of people is is the, the cost and this huge cost associated with going down the pathway that we're going at the moment. Maybe that's the connection we can straighten it. Uh, two brief comments. Um, so the, the question down the back, all the research on health promotion, which climate issue in a party, if you look at smoking campaigns or whatever, teaches that there are three things you need to do. You've got to be really clear and honest about the problem, which smoking ads are. You've got to tell people and explain what the solution is. And you've got to provide a path, a path that's meaningful to the person to get from the problem to the solution. So you see a lot of those smoking ads about people who try to give up but can't. And they say, every time you give up, you're getting closer, which is helping people go down that path. I mean, if you look at smoking health promotion, there's a really clear methodology about problem, answer, your path from one to the other that appears to work really well that we haven't, that we haven't applied to, to climate. And in particular, during the period of this, this Labor government, what happened, they tried to sell a carbon tax, an answer, without explaining the problem. Mm. Quite consciously, they decided not to talk about climate change or impacts 
because Abbott had them, had them spooked. And you cannot convince people of an answer if they don't think there's a problem. And in fact, the, the large environment groups who ran the Say Yes campaign more or less did the same thing. And it's, it's, I think it's been a, a, a shocking mistake. If you don't convince people that the problem is severe, of course they're not going to want to change. And I think that, that, that was a terrible mistake over the last six or seven years in Australia. And in terms of the alternatives you're talking about, you might want to go and check out the solar thermal plant that we've got a big model of outside, and that's what Joe Blue was talking about up in Port Augusta, so that's a great alternative that can provide us base load power. We'll be talking about it after lunch in this session in the afternoon too, so plenty more on that. Any other questions at this stage, I'll take another three. Yeah. And I'd like to see what Julian was saying. The consumerism. We're consuming so much and we are chucking out so much. When are we going to start living more simply with less? This is, you know, we're talking about climate change, but because as human beings we are so greedy for so much and we live at such a high standard of living, we need to stop this and we need to start going back to basics again. Any other? <laughs> so why don't we stop driving cars as one simple thing that one every individual can do? <laughs> um, we, we now live in a period of hyper consumption, of over consumption. Um, why is that the case? I mean, this is an interesting sort of sociological question. It's partly because we live in a society that is suffering from it, um, ever larger amounts of fear and anxiety about the pace of change, about not being able to keep up. And a lot of that fear and anxiety is being um, uh, channeled into consumption. Because if you buy the latest and newest iPhone, the best iPad, these are ways of keeping up. We, 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 uh, we live in a society which is, which is sub, I think, substituting consumption for concern about the future. We assume now rather than think about tomorrow, which is sort of a, 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 a parable for, for the climate change problem. Um, we know the, what we do about it. Um, I guess that happens from the ground up uh, in community movements for sustainability. Um, I think also we probably need to have a very honest conversation and, and get out there. I mean, as, as Kevin, An that Kevin Anderson quote that I, 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 um, um, I read out from, he said, it's not only about changing the energy supply. We can't change the energy supply quickly enough to, to continue with the amount of, of, of energy demand we have. We have to reduce in the West our energy demand as well if we're going to get out of climate change. And maybe that's one of the ways forward because if we consume, can keep on consuming the amount of energy we do, and the Chinese who aspire to our level of lifestyle, so another six billion people are going to have the same sort of energy we do, the game's all over. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really it's not, not so much right in my area, but it was an interesting talk last year where um, someone was looking at the psychology behind our behaviour and, and the climate change. and. Um, they spoke about um, essentially our, our caveman minds, where we're still running um, as if we're living in caves, where we spend all the time in famine, and then occasionally you might uh, have a mammoth in, so you bite it while you had a mammoth. Well, we've just got mammoths continually. Um, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we, we, I think in some ways we're possibly pushing up against our, um, our sort of evolutionary um, behaviour. Um, and it, it, it's possibly what uh, may well take. Um, things like um, you know, sort of peer pressure, or you know, sort of, you um, have to think very cleverly about strategies to um, motivate people away from that sort of um, falling into that sort of um, default behaviour. So you know, things like um, um, energy efficiency, you know, um, highlighting to people where they sit in relation to what other people are doing around them. Um, those sorts of strategies are actually proven to be highly effective. So you know, yeah, I, I think that's. Something we, we need to realise, we, we probably are a little bit hard, hard wired to enjoy it while it's there. Uh, so we need to find clever ways of, of acting against that. Uh, 
there any other burning questions, I might take one or two, otherwise...